Today I'll be showing you how I like to make elderberry syrup. I'll also be talking about a few ways that you can change it up and add some variation. Many of the ingredients I'm using today are optional. The only ingredients you need to make an elderberry syrup are dried elderberries, filtered water, and honey. Thank you so much for being here. Please don't forget to like and subscribe. Let's get right into making this. Now for next eating one these. First things first, cinnamon sticks. I have a couple of tea bags that I'm using that I just happen to have on hand. One is a turmeric ginger tea and one is a plain ginger tea. Now, if I had the herbs on hand, I would just throw a chunk of ginger and a chunk of turmeric in there. They're just wonderful anti-inflammatory herbs to add. For this recipe, I'm using about a cup and a half of elderberries. Cinnamon is another one of those herbs that really adds a lot of benefits to your syrup. It also adds a wonderful flavor. Other great additions to this syrup would be things like clove or the zest from an orange or a lemon. But a very simple recipe is just a half a cup of elderberries to three cups of water and somewhere around one cup of honey, but you won't add the honey in until much later once, once our decoction is cooled. So you'll just gather up all of your dry ingredients and get them into your saucepan. I'm using a stainless steel heavy bottom saucepan here, and I find that works really well when doing herbal preparations. Now, the next thing that I like to add is actually a little bit of apple cider vinegar. The reason why I do this is because the acidity in the apple cider vinegar actually pulls out a, a different set of constituents than what water alone can pull out. And this is going to make your syrup just a little bit more potent. The apple cider vinegar isn't going to give it a lot of flavor or anything like that. It's not going to be sour if you just put a little bit. As you saw, I just kind of threw in a splash, probably a tablespoon or, or two. And then I went ahead and added water. I put four cups in to start. You'll bring that to a boil and then you'll reduce it down to a simmer. And you'll simmer that for 30 to 45 minutes. Now, you're welcome to stop at that point, at 30 or 45 minutes. You can smash and strain the elderberry syrup and move on to the next step of allowing it to cool and add the honey. I, however, do not. I let my syrup go the first 30 to 40 minutes, and then I use a potato masher and I smash my berries. Then I add more water, I just kind of fill the pot back up a little bit, sort of back up to the level it had been at before. I don't worry too much about measuring it. And then I bring it back to a boil, reduce it down, and I let it simmer down again. As you can see, I let it simmer down quite a bit and it becomes just this really dark, beautiful color. Now for the next part where we strain, I have this neat little funnel that goes right into a canning jar. It has a fine mesh insert and I go ahead and I line that with a cheesecloth. I do mine a double layer just to make sure that no little particles get through. You could also do something similar and just use some kind of clean tea towel or even a coffee filter could be used for this. You'll just, you won't be able to squeeze it out the same with a coffee filter. You'll have to just let gravity do the work. You'll pour all of the decoction into the cheesecloth and allow it to start to drain out. I recommend that you wait for it to cool down before you do the next part. I did not want to wait, so I did put on these gloves so that I wouldn't burn my hands and then you'll just go ahead and just really squeeze everything out. Elderberry is well known for its immune boosting qualities. It's also a good diaphoretic. A diaphoretic is an herb that opens the skin's elimination channels and it promotes sweating. Oftentimes when we have a fever, that's our body's way of actually trying to burn out 
whatever infection or um, virus that we have. Elderberry is also a wonderful anti-inflammatory, which is one of the reasons why I often will add other anti-inflammatory herbs. Once I'm done straining everything out, I actually like to add all of the plant matter back into my pot, fill it back with water, and do the whole process over again. However, the second time I do it, I usually just strain that out and I drink it as an infusion over the next couple of days, as it won't last nearly as long as the syrup will. This step is of course optional. For the honey in this recipe, you'll want to measure out your final decoction and then you'll want to add 50% of that volume as honey. For example, if your finished reduced down decoction was a cup, you would put a half a cup of honey in it. Now my decoction filled about two thirds of my jar, so I just filled the rest of my jar with honey. And I did this part once it was cooled down. That's very important, especially if you're working with raw honey. If you're not working with raw honey, go ahead and mix it in at any point. You just wanna make sure to dissolve it really well. Serving size is one teaspoon for children, one tablespoon for adults, one to three times a day. My kids really like to have theirs over some yogurt, which I'm showing here. They think it's a really yummy treat. Elderberry syrup is really wonderful to have daily as a preventative. It's also wonderful to have if you do find yourself sick and under the weather. I like to add a tablespoon to some hot water just to make a little bit of tea. And then finally, you'll just want to jar them and label them with a date. The infusion will last just a couple of days, but the honey will last quite some time. I've never had mine go bad. Thanks so much for joining me for this video. I hope you'll come back soon. Take care.